With the 2020 presidential election fast approaching, I thought now would be a good time to take a look at the American political spectrum and discuss just how little disagreement there actually is within American politics. Let's start with a tool we're probably all familiar with, the political compass test. This simple test has you answer a series of questions, then, based on your responses, gives you a set of two values, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis, which it uses to plot your overall political ideology on the chart. For those unfamiliar with the compass, it's a roughly accurate way to help you understand where your opinions fit in the wide range of political thought. The x-axis represents economics, with an economy run by a cooperative collective agency on the far left, and a market left to the devices of competing corporations and individuals on the far right. The y-axis represents social stances, with the very top representing a complete obedience to authority, and the very bottom representing a maximization of personal freedom. A lot of people get hung up on the left-right portion, and conflate one side or the other with authoritarianism. This is a mistake. Any point on the left-right spectrum is capable of authoritarianism. For example, you'll find leaders like Kim Jong-un on the left, and Adolf Hitler on the right. There's a vocal subset of figures on the right who love to claim that Hitler was a leftist, but we'll get to that later in the video. To give you a few examples of notable figures from each quadrant, you'll find Mao, Stalin, Kim, and Mugabe in the authoritarian left quadrant, Hitler, Viktor Orban, Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump in the authoritarian right, Ayn Rand, Milton Friedman, Friedrich Hayek, and Gary Johnson in the libertarian right, and Gandhi, Thomas Paine, Bernie Sanders, and Nelson Mandela in the libertarian left. So, to reiterate, the x-axis is economic stances, and the y-axis is social stances. As a small disclaimer, no simple political test is the most accurate determinant for actual human ideology. A two-axis chart is simply not nuanced enough to be 100% correct. But the political compass is a useful tool for understanding broad trends, and it's helpful for this type of analysis. Now, let's look at the compass for the 2020 presidential race. Interesting, right? Maybe not what you expected. There's a whole lot of yelling and name-calling between presidential candidates and their supporters and detractors, but when you take their voting records and plot them on a chart like this, it becomes apparent that there's really not that much separating most of the candidates. Even Bernie Sanders, whom many people paint as a communist, barely squeaked his way onto the left side of the spectrum. What's going on here? The reason a figure like Bernie only just passes the center line is that the political compass isn't just mapping American sensibilities, but the entirety of political thought. The American political spectrum stops right about here. Anything beyond Bernie's moderate social democratic platform is absolutely unthinkable in modern-day America. So, why does our national political conversation stop so close to the center line? One of the biggest reasons is the legacy of the Cold War. The Red Scare was scary. In the days when schools had nuclear attack drills, anyone even remotely critical of the prevailing American political model was seen as a communist and sympathetic to the nation's greatest enemy. This led to years of crackdowns on left-leaning political groups, McCarthy's communist witch hunts, and a general circling of the wagons around the quote, American way of life. When the Soviet Union fell and the Eastern Bloc countries got both democracy and a free market at the same time, the two axes of the political compass got tangled up. This bundling led many to falsely equate free market capitalism with democracy, and more left-wing politics with authoritarianism. If you need proof of just how ingrained this type of thinking has become in America, take a look at these pictures. The terminology is always the same. Blank equals communism. Apparently, keeping Baskin-Robbins closed so people don't die from a deadly virus is communism. Who would have guessed? When the incredibly popular Ronald Reagan came along and launched his campaign of deregulation, tax rate reductions, increased military spending, and union busting, he put the final nail in the coffin of American left politics. Since then, we've lived in an era of consensus. Politicians may appear to disagree on many subjects, and they probably truly see each other as complete opposites. But the truth of the matter is that, with very few exceptions, the entirety of American politics is contained within a single quadrant of the political compass. The entire national political dialogue is framed to begin and end on the right. So, for the sake of expanding the national dialogue, let's talk a little bit about the neglected left side of the spectrum. But first, we need to put one erroneous claim to rest. There are some notable figures on the right who claim that Adolf Hitler was a leftist. Everyone's favorite felonious filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza and fail son extraordinaire Ben Shapiro are particularly vocal about it. Their argument usually boils down to, well, the Nazis were called the National Socialist Party, checkmate. Okay, sure. But the Nazis were no more of a socialist party than North Korea is democratic, by the people, or a republic. It's the same tactic taken by autocrats throughout history. They pick a term their citizens associate with something good, usually freedom, or democratic, or peoples, and they adopt it to make themselves look good. Hitler himself said, Our adopted term socialist has nothing to do with Marxian socialism. So there you go. To be fair, bad faith arguments like those from D'Souza are generally dismissed by most thinking people. But there are plenty of older folks who get caught in the trap. 
which is sad because they're completely unaware of the fact that they're being taken advantage of. But while we're on the topic of socialism, I think it would be useful to explain what the ideology really represents. After all, the term has made quite a comeback in recent years, with a larger percentage of young people across America having a more favorable opinion of socialism than capitalism. Socialism, in America, is a blanket term for generally leftist ideology. A socialist would advocate for a more egalitarian society, where there's not a tiny percentage of people hoarding all the wealth. They want to end pointless wars like the decades-old conflict in the Middle East, where young men and women are sent to die and murder other humans for the sake of the rich and powerful. They advocate for a more humane society where the sick can get treatment and not go bankrupt in the process, where small businesses aren't crushed by multinational corporations, and where people are paid fair wages for their work. They also advocate for worker control of, or at least worker involvement in, enterprise. That's a key point that most Americans seem to miss. When someone shouts that the government issuing a quarantine is communism, they're more than a little off base. Government doing stuff is not communism, or even socialism. If the US government were to establish a more robust safety net for workers laid off during the pandemic, that still wouldn't be socialism, nor should such a government be considered leftist. If workers don't have a say in how enterprises run, you have a left-leaning centrist government at most. It's important to have at least a general understanding of what terms mean when we're talking about politics. You hear a lot of right versus left, freedom versus communism bickering in the US, but when you hear something like that, remember just how similar mainstream politicians are these days. Don't buy into the fear-mongering, and take the time to educate yourself about the whole spectrum of political thought, not just the stunted American variety. While the political compass test isn't perfect, it's a good place to start if you'd like to understand more about your opinions and who shares them. There's a link to take the test in the description below, as well as links to the 8 values and 9 axes quizzes, which attempt to further explore your personal ideology. Take the results from your quizzes and use them to find books to read on the subject. American political understanding is not great, but by learning more, you can do just a little bit to fix that problem. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, consider subscribing to stay up to date with my latest episodes. If you hated it, go ahead and drop a thumbs down. And if you really want to help support my channel, I recently started a Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash second thought. You can check out my previous episodes by clicking the links on your screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.